Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first in a series of videos I plan on creating to help familiarize you with general aviation airfields around the world. Each airfield is a living, breathing entity with its own quirks and regulations. In a flight simulator, we have the ability to fly into so many different airfields, and that means that we don't always spend the time to really get to know a particular region. In this video, I want to begin the series on the south coast of England and expand from there. So, with the introductions out of the way, let's begin. Shoreham Airfield, or Brighton City Airport as it's officially called, is actually the oldest airport in the UK. Which is reason enough for us to begin here. Interestingly, it's also in the top five oldest airports in the world. The official opening was on the 20th of June 1911, although there was a flight made by Harold P. Piffard from Shoreham in 1910. Not long after this, as with many airfields in southern England, Shoreham was used by the Royal Flying Corps in the First World War. Both Bellerios and BE-2s flew from this airfield across the Channel to join in the Great Conflict. In the Second World War, several RAF units had fleeting positionings here, and the airfield was bombed a few times by the Luftwaffe. But RAF squadrons were only posted here as a secondary location, as RAF Tangmere seems to have been the favoured nearby aerodrome. When Tangmere was bombed and was undergoing repairs, the RAF units would take up temporary operations from Shoreham. There are many more details with regards World War II, that would be a whole separate video, but for now, let's move on. After the war, the airfield received its paved runway in 1981, and the main terminal building was Grade II listed in 2007. Today, Shoreham Airport serves as a popular GA airfield and hosts flight training as well as business and executive aircraft which can operate up to a range of 900 miles, making many destinations in Europe a one-stop flight. The airport also hosts helicopter charter facilities. Now let's break up the video into segments, each dealing with a specific aspect. They will be frequencies, ground charts, visual reference points or VRPs, approaches, and VFR circuit details. Frequencies At Shoreham we have an ATIS frequency of 130.908 called Shoreham Info. The tower is 123.155 or 125.405. Shoreham approach controller is usually 123.15. Apart from these local controllers, there is a London South controller who covers most of the southeast coast of England. Once you have departed the local area of the airport, expect to be transferred. For our purposes in Flight Simulator, pay attention to the VATSIM or IVAO controller frequencies and the top-down controller approach. Ground Charts You might be surprised, but at Shoreham we have four runways. The paved runway gets most of the attention, but it's helpful to know where the grass strips are as they may be in use when the wind is right. Let's look at runways first. To begin with, let's focus on the paved runway. This is runway 02-20. It's the longest runway at 1036 meters long and about 18 meters wide. It features pappy lights on both ends of the runway and the appropriate runway signs and markings. See my previous PPL training video on that topic. The magnetic bearing of the runway 02 is 022 and 20 is 202. Both thresholds sit at 7 feet above sea level. Bravo 1, Alpha 1, Runway 24, Lima 2, Lima 1 and Kilo 1 all lead on and off this runway along with two unmarked routes from the grass 02-20 runway. At the 02 end we have Alpha 1 as the main entrance and exit. Aircraft that need full length can utilize Bravo 1, but should be aware of the train line immediately to the south of the airfield over the fence. On the northern end at 20, the runway has a loop section for backtracking, with Kilo 1 being the lane of choice for full length departures. Be aware that both ends of this paved runway have displaced thresholds. Next we have the grass strip that runs parallel to the paved one. 
This is used the least since its parallel neighbor is always favored when the wind permits, but if there are any small aircraft that specifically need a grass surface, then this is used. It is 602 meters long and about 23 meters wide, with the same magnetic bearings as the paved runway. Intersections Foxtrot 2 and Foxtrot 1 connect this runway to the rest of the airport. Now let's look at the largest grass strip. This is runway 06-24 that runs parallel to Shoreham's hangars and general airfield maintenance buildings along the south side of the airport. It has a length of 799 meters and is about 25 meters wide, magnetic bearings of 064 and 244. Taxiway intersections for this strip are Juliet 1, Mike, and both runway 02 and 31 on either end. There are also a couple of undesignated paths from the paved Alpha Taxiway on the south side. This runway is the main choice when the paved runway is not in use, as it provides a significant difference in approach angle, and sometimes it makes sense for light aircraft that are at home on a grass surface to make a final approach to this runway rather than having to deal with a significant crosswind just to use the primary paved runway. And lastly, let's quickly look at runway 13-31. This is the smallest and narrowest runway at Shoreham, coming in at 408 meters long and about 18 meters wide with a magnetic heading of 125 and 305. This runway can be entered from just before Kilo 3, the end point of the runway 24, Foxtrot and Lima 3. This runway completes a triangle of approaches available at Shoreham and small aircraft can make use of this when the wind is right. Unfortunately, only the paved runway suits anything larger such as business jets. An important note is that this runway should not be used for circuit training. Now that we have gone over the runways, let's turn our attention to the rest of the airfield. We have two primary taxiways. Alpha and Foxtrot. Alpha runs from the main apron to the 02 end of the paved runway, and Foxtrot runs from the main apron to the 20 end of the paved runway. Between them both, they encapsulate all the intersections and routes to and from all the runways at Shoreham. Expect in your taxi clearance to be using one of these two main routes, from your runway vacation to your final parking spot. Intersections for Alpha include Alpha 5, just next to the helicopter stands, Alpha 4, near the helipad refueling, Mike, that leads to multiple grass runway entrances, Alpha 3, which is useful for holding aircraft for congestion spacing, Juliet 2, which leads to Juliet 1, the entrance to runway 06, Alpha 2 and Charlie 1, which act as a pass point, Alpha 1, which is the main entrance to runway 02, and Bravo 2, which is a hold point for the full length lineup of 02 along with Bravo 1. Taxiway Foxtrot runs from the main apron. Let's start at Kilo 5 and Kilo 4, which provide a hold short area while aircraft are on final approach to runway 31. Kilo 3 and Kilo 2, which do the same from the opposite direction. Kilo 1, at the far end of the taxiway, provides a hold point for runway 20. Other taxiway intersections include Lima 3, Lima 2, and Lima 1. These are grass taxiways connecting the ends of 02 and 13 to the paved section. And finally, Foxtrot 1 and Foxtrot 2 connect the northern grass taxiways to the southern end. These are the runways and taxiways at Shoreham. It's useful to get an overview, and we can often be deceived that small airports have simple layouts. Next, let's look at aprons. We start with the main paved apron at Shoreham, directly outside the main terminal building. It connects with refueling points for both fixed wing and helicopter aircraft to the west, and the grass apron to the east. In terms of terminal buildings, let's start with the main terminal building and ATC tower the Transair Pilot Shop, FTA Training School, the Pilot's Briefing, and here is a quick look at all the other buildings. Last but not least, we have the Shoreham DME, 109.95, and the Shoreham NDB, 332.
Visual Reference Points, or VRPs. We have four official VRPs, or Visual Reference Points, for Shoreham Airport. They are Little Hampton, Washington Intersection, Lewes Intersection, and Brighton Marina. These are visual locations used while flying VFR to channel the flow of air traffic through predefined and predictable corridors. You should contact Shoreham ATC a few nautical miles before reaching these points to give ATC the chance to respond accordingly. It's customary to provide information to ATC such as call sign, aircraft type, en route to and from, position, altitude, conditions, and your request. You should then be provided with traffic information and joining instructions depending on your needs. Altitude restrictions come into play when flying in the immediate area around an airport, so pay attention to the approach charts and the guidance they provide. Approaches We have two main approach plates for Shoreham, runway 02 and 20. All other grass strips are VFR use only. RNAV Runway 02 We begin this approach at Ripple, south of the airfield over the water at 2200 feet. From Ripple, it's a turn to heading 021 and a descent to 1500 feet in time to hit Kilo Alpha 02 Foxtrot at 3.9 nautical miles from the threshold. Once at Kilo Alpha 02 Foxtrot, we continue our descent to the threshold itself. It's a 3.5% glide slope, which should match the Pappy lights, and once at Mike Alpha 02, continue your approach until you gain visual reference with the threshold, or if not, instigate your missed approach no lower than 430 feet. Once in the missed approach phase, immediately begin climbing on a heading of 011 to 1500 feet. Once at 1500 feet, begin a left-hand turn in the climb to 2200 feet and enter the holding. Arnav Runway 20 We begin this approach at Aduri, northeast of the airfield and at 2200 feet. For this approach, we turn to a heading of 201. Aduri is 8 nautical miles from the threshold, and we fly level until we arrive at Kilo Alpha 20 Foxtrot. At this waypoint, we begin a 4.48% descent all the way to the threshold. The decision altitude for runway 20 is 760 feet. If you haven't gained a visual reference of your threshold by then, instigate your missed approach, which will be a climb straight ahead to 1500 feet, and then a left turn and continue climbing to 2200 feet to enter the holding. VFR Circuit Details Circuit height at Shoreham is 1100 feet, and preference, as we previously stated, is given to the paved runway 02-20. But apart from that, the grass runway 07-25 can be used when circumstances dictate its use. All circuits at Shoreham are left-hand circuits. Thank you for watching the video. This is the first in a series I hope to create, and each will be different depending on different airfield layouts and charts I have access to. I hope this was helpful, and please mention in the comments which GA airfield you would like to see in future.